I wanted to go over briefly a lot of the a high level of the product content that we have on the Escalade. Um, the first two slides, I'm really trying to lay out a, a vision. What was our strategy? Where were we really going from the beginning when we got into the fourth generation? What did we want? What did we want? So the first thing on here is the exterior had to be unmistakably Escalade. Um, we know we have a good thing with the Escalade. It, it's, it's got 100% awareness in its segment. Everybody knows what it is if, they, if they've been buying luxury SUVs. So we wanted to make sure we were more evolutionary with an edge and an attitude instead of revolutionary to the point where they, people would say, oh, what did they do? They had it going, they just they went too far and this doesn't work anymore. So we really wanted to make sure that everybody instantly recognized it. By still keeping the proportions right, keeping a bold presence, uh, you know, big grills, um, working with our second generation LED headlamps. That's where we really were focused on the exterior. The interior, this is one of our big goals. We wanted to get the vehicle into the Cadillac family even more than we were. So every generation we've taken one step closer. And, uh, and that design has been moving as well. So we just kept focusing and getting it in there where we've got these great, um, great materials, a very nice la layering strategy, strategy where you go from these soft wrap materials into suede material, into wood, and then right back into a nice wrapped material so that everything on the interior that the uh, customer is touching and feeling is wrapped and soft. Um, and again, we talked about this a lot last night. It's all what we're calling this cut and sewn. And you can see right on the IP, there's this beautiful, what we call it deck stitching, where it all comes together. Or on the seats or the console, you've got French stitching. So we use a, a variety of those just to keep getting that luxury level up higher. Also wanted to offer some new technologies that, that are useful and really helpful for this segment. Uh, the first one is a hands-free lift gate. I don't know if, um, Last night, I know we uh, showed that to a couple different groups. Please try it yourself. If you've got the key fob in your hand, purse, or pocket on the ride today, just give it a straight kick in and out from the, uh, you'll see the license plate, the center line in the rear. It, it, it's just a nice feature. We're the first ones in the segment with this. Um, we've added a, a bunch of safety features, which I'll talk about in a little bit. That's where we're in the driver awareness and assist. We're going to talk about magnetic ride control. The other one here, thoughtful capabilities. Um, the people who buy the Escalade, um, they are, they are uh, luxury families that are on the go, and they've got a lot of hobbies, they've got a lot of needs, they're carting their, their children to dance, to soccer and the like. Uh, so we needed to make it even more useful than it is. A uh, big thing we wanted to get in here was a fold flat, a powerful flat flush third row seat. Uh, we're really happy with the execution, and we'll talk about that uh, in a little more. So, couple different pockets that we really wanted to focus on. So what makes the Escalade an Escalade? Um, again, fully functioning LED headlamps. Um, there's only a handful, and when I say handful, probably four or five different vehicles in the whole automotive industry that have gone to this point with a full functioning LED headlamp. And um, if that doesn't make, if the wording isn't right for you, these are where the LEDs are actually the low beam and the high beam. And if you look at our headlamps in detail, they're beautiful. It's almost the culmination of art and science that are coming together. So LED technology is much more available now. We've got this beautiful design that we're able to use with. And that's what I'm talking about, about art and science coming together. Um, and the technology is unique. It's called uh, total internal reflectance. And the LEDs actually come in from the side on the high beam and then get reflected out. So if you want to know a lot more than that, if I'm driving with you, we'll talk about it. Um, again, the hands-free lift gate, and um, one of the things that we know we needed to work on here, and we've done a nice job, is we've improved the entry egress, getting in and out of the second row and the third row. So the B pillar, the, pillar, the main pillar between the first and second rows, we thinned that down and we pushed it forward so that there's a lot more foot um, access and entry into the second row. The C pillar, uh, the pillar behind the second row, we've made that more vertical. So if you're flipping and folding the seats to get into the third row, there's more head and shoulder room as you're getting in. So we've cleaned a lot of that up. Um, again, uh, we've talked about cut and sew interior. Um, 
where I'll highlight on this slide is we really went for increased storage on the vehicle. Um, a lot of kids are in the vehicle, a lot of usage. So we went and we put in, uh, it's a, in the middle of the door. Every door has got a new shelf, a new pocket. You'll see that in there. Uh, second row, got an additional map pocket with a bottle holder. We moved the cup holders in the second row from the floor, which were a little hard for four or five year old kids to get. Put it right in the armrest, so it's much easier access. There's uh, behind the third row now, we've got hidden storage under the floor. So we've really, uh, really done a nice job there. Not to mention the hidden storage behind the queue system. Okay, here's one, here's an area that I, I'm confident all of you will really pick up on the ride today. The vehicle is amazingly quiet. We've taken a lot of, uh, a lot of steps, a lot of unique um, areas in acoustics, whether it's barrier, whether it's absorption, whether it's changing or transfer function in the vehicle, which we can talk about that if you're really interested in. How does energy noise get into the vehicle? Um, we've worked a lot with that. Uh, we changed the door design to help decrease wind noise. When we did that, we were able to get in the triple seal doors. Um, we have gone to acoustic laminated glass in the windshield in the front row. So it really cuts down on wind noise coming in. A lot of new barrier materials in the vehicle um, where we've increased the density on the carpet in the first and second row. We've put in new acoustic pads under the IP. We've increased the, uh, the thickness, the density of the pad, this barrier material that goes between the engine and the front of the dash. A lot of things like that. So um, I think what you'll find is it's a very peaceful, whisper kind of quiet interior that's very relaxing. And the goal there is when you're done with your, uh, your hour commute or you're on vacation, you've been driving all day, you get out of the vehicle and you go, wow, I am refreshed. You know, this hasn't been any effort to drive this vehicle. You know, it's just my own sanctuary. So we really focused on that. Um, power folding third row seats. Um, this is a nice execution in this sense. Uh, they're very fast, three to five seconds, they're down or up. But what we've also done, and those buttons are on the uh, passenger side, you open the lift gate, they're right there on the passenger side. We also have a set for the second row. And the nice part about that is it's a, that those are a single push and they'll lay the second row down automatically. So the nice part of that is if you've gone to the store, you have an on wire you're putting in or you've just been to Costco or wherever you're going, you don't have to go to the passenger side then go back to the driver's side and lay this, the second row seats down and then finally come back to the third row. All that can be done right from the rear of the vehicle. So that's a very nice execution that I don't believe is uh, done in the second. Um, rear seat entertainment. This is a high penetrator. It, it, for, um, certainly on the long wheelbase, uh, fam very family oriented. And we've made some really nice improvements on this. Uh, we've gone from an 8 inch to a 9 inch screen, which, okay, it sounds like an inch, but when you're talking percentages, you know, you're up about 12, 13%. So that's very nice. It's Blu ray capable, segment first again. And the important part of that is that the folks that buy these vehicles, a lot of them are technology leaders. Blu ray's been out for quite a while now. Half or more of their home libraries are DVD or Blu ray. And so they want to bring those in there. And uh, I'm sure you're aware you cannot play a regular Blu-ray on a regular DVD player. That does not work. You can go the other way around, but you can't play Blu-ray on, on a regular DVD. So we had to make sure for the usage that we went to Blu-ray. And then the, the simple things that are really fun and they don't cost you anything is right up here in the overhead console. It's just a pocket. It's a storage area for the remote control. So how many, how many of you been at home going, where's the remote control? I just want to change the channel on my TV, and you can't find it. Well, now we've got a place that's really easy and accessible to everybody back there. And then whatever you're bringing in, you're bringing in your own gaming, your own movies on the USB or an SD card, it all fits right in on the back of the center console. So it's a very nice and simple system. Yep. Hi, I'm Andrew Smith. I'm the Executive Director of Design for Cadillac Globally. And uh, Andrew, we're in the brand new Escalade. From a design standpoint of view, it feels like it's more evolutionary than revolutionary. You kind of took the concept and you took it to 11. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's pretty fair. And certainly the focus on this vehicle has been on refinement and on craftsmanship. So building on a great brand um, that, that is the Escalade, almost a, a sub-brand of Cadillac, 
but really focusing on craftsmanship and fantastic use of materials in the interior. So let me ask you the easy question first. What are you proudest of? I think actually, I'm, I while the interior I think is is a massive step forward and really a beautiful interior. Probably the thing I'm most excited about is the headlamps. I yeah, just they're think cool. they're really awesome. Yeah, and and you know you get looks in traffic. People people love the look of the car. Now, uh, obviously, the headlamps have become kind of bling, right? The, yeah. The, the, the jewelry of any vehicle. Yeah. Uh, and they define what that vehicle is. Yep. So how much time did you spend on them? I mean, how did you get... To, and, and the other cool thing is there's that kind of a neat symmetry between them, right? You've got mm -hmm. this kind of up and down yep. um, symmetry that you have in the headlamps and yep. you also have in the tail lamps. So yeah. was that on purpose? Yeah. So again, what we try to do is take elements that people know as Cadillac and evolve them, you know, bring it forward. And Cadillac has always been about taking the latest technology and applying it in, in an artistic way. And you see that on both the exterior and on the interior of this vehicle. Yeah, and so art and science mm -hmm. becomes uh, design and execution. Absolutely, absolutely. And even, you know, on the interior, you've driven the car today. I think you'll agree that it really is a very refined vehicle. But it's also a vehicle that you can tailor to your own uh, needs or your own preferences. And I think that using technology to make the vehicle your own is something that Cadillac's really interested in. Yeah, talk to me about the materials you use. This wood feels very woody. <laughs> yeah. So actually, this is the open pore wood. Yeah. So there's there's three woods available on the Escalade today. Um, but this open pore wood is really a very different interpretation of wood in the automotive sense. Usually it's kind of glossy, like a piano, right? Yeah, exactly. We're always trying to make it as... as um, clean and as shiny as possible like a grand piano this is something that's truer to the material itself more like you'd see in furniture where you actually see um, the open pores of the wood and really highlighting the grain with this kind of satin finish and i believe the interior here is called kona yeah yeah so yeah. we're kind of uh, in, a, in a chocolatey uh... yeah and and i i love the the kona finish this is actually one of my favorite interiors but when you look closely at the texture of the leather you can see that there's kind of this multicolor finish within the um, kona itself and the accent of the stitching, um, I think, just you know, makes it look fantastic. Now, some of the uh, other brands use mm -hmm. fake stitching, but yeah. this is real. I can tell yeah, you. <laughs> we talked a lot um, on this vehicle about authenticity of materials, and it's something that we're really uh, passionate about in all Cadillacs. But as I um, said earlier, if you look at oh, the decors of our interiors, if it looks like wood, it is wood. If it looks like metal, it's because it is metal, and we really are. Um, passionate about maintaining this truth or this integrity or this authenticity in our interiors. So I've got you here. What's the future of Cadillac? Where do you see it going? Where are you taking it? Well, I think the future of Cadillac is that um, it's basically always going to be forward looking. So we're intrigued by new technologies, by new materials and by uh, implementing them in uh, interesting ways into luxury interiors. Exterior styling, it's about taking um, the cues that we know as Cadillac and evolving them even further. So the, the vehicles always should be very um, dynamic. They should have a presence about them, but um, always being very forward looking. Yeah, yeah. So kind of give me a, I know th that's that's a big vision. Yeah. But what does that mean when you kind of distill it to what people will be looking at and seeing, you yeah. know? five years down the road? Well, I think five years down the road for Cadillac, it's going to be about pushing premium execution in, in interiors. So even more premium materials. Um, and again, exploring new ways to interpret those materials because we've, we, we always kind of see the leather, the stitching, the wood. I think it really is about exploring new materials and um, taking inspiration from product design and furniture design and home design and bringing those into the vehicles. And on the exterior, about identifying technologies that enable us to have even more passionate, more distinctive styling for Cadillac. Yeah, and you've got this wealth of uh, history to draw upon, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, Cadillac. <laughs> it's incredible. It really is. I mean, you were saying to me earlier yeah. that, that you went into the Heritage Center and you, you looked yeah. at the older Cadillacs, you yeah. know, the fins, all this stuff that, yeah. that, that is synonymous with the brand. Yeah, there's. I mean, there's so much to draw from, and my perspective is that each successful Cadillac or each uh, Cadillac that is really memorable was a vehicle that was very forward-looking in its time. So our history is almost about the future. Um, but certainly, you know, some of my favorites, the Cyclone concept is, is one that is just such a fantastic revolutionary concept and so beautiful and delicate and elegant. Um, the 67 Eldorado is another car that I just absolutely adore. Um, I think it's such a beautiful Cadillac personal coupe. Um, the 16, you know, another car, and then a wealth of concept cars as well that uh, we've got this rich heritage to draw on and take, okay, what are the cues that we're interested in or that we want to continue to develop for Cadillac and, and where do we want to push the brand? All right, so sum up the Escalade in three words. 
Three words. Yeah. Um, bold. Yeah. Distinctive. And then uh, the last one's not a word, but a phrase. I think it's a celebration of success. So basically you're saying that people buy this car because they've been successful in life and this is a reward and this is yeah. kind of a way of showing uh, in a very American way that, yeah. that you know I've made it and yeah. I'm going to treat myself to a car that represents that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's it's a vehicle that isn't about um, about being um, or about showing off. Um, it's becoming more and more a vehicle that really is a celebration of success. Uh, just connectivity as a whole. Um, whatever you've got, you can bring into the vehicle. Um, the Q system itself can take up to 10 uh, Bluetooth devices, all, all on its own. We also have five USB ports on the interior. There's an SD card slot in there. There are five um, 12 volt auxiliary power outlets and there's a new uh, 110 volt outlet. So whether it's charging or just getting the information into the vehicle, we've got you covered, no problem. The sound system. I hope you guys take advantage of this one today. Uh, if you can, if you remember, it takes about 30, 40 seconds to pair your phone. You, you know your own music, you know what you listen to. Put this system to the test. It is an awesome system. It's a 16 speaker sound system with center point and it's got this great technology. Um, the, the highs are just really crisp. The whole mid-range is, is very full. It's not hollow and the bass is just pure. It won't distort. As, as loud as you want to play this, it's going to sound fantastic. It's like you ever wear headphones and, you sit and you, you're listening and you go, oh my gosh, I've never heard that. You know, you hear the new sounds. This audio system does that same thing, but in the whole vehicle. Power and performance. When you talk about the DNA of an Escalade, apart from that uh, dramatic presence and the big, the bold stance, here's another one that's always been a key player for every generation is the power and performance. And we, this is an all new 6.2 liter and the main highlights are, we're up to 420 horsepower coming from 403. That's great. The bigger story is the torque. We're up to 460 uh, pound-feet of torque, up from 417. That is a great story. And here's where it's great. Zero to 60 in 5.96 seconds. That is a rocket for a vehicle of this size. So this is where the, uh, the torque really is important. Um, Active fuel management is one of these technologies where we uh, shut down four of our eight cylinders when we're going down the highway when we don't need that power. We've really extended the usage of it. That helps us to get to this great story where we are the uh, leader in V8 fuel economy in the segment at 15 and 21, 15 city, 21 highway. No one else, everybody else is down here where when I get to the longest vehicle in the segment in four-wheel drive at 14 and 21, that's as good as anybody else in the segment gets, and a lot are below that. So the big story here is we've got the most horsepower, most, most torque, and the best fuel economy. So we're covered there. That is a great power story. Um, one of the things you're going to find, um, especially if you've been in the, in the previous generation, Steering and suspension improvements. Um, these are really typically unsung heroes and they don't get a lot of love, right? But we've made great improvements here. The first one is on magnetic ride control. This is the third generation and we've added a selectable mode. So um, when you're looking at the Q system, in the lower left there's a button, it's a shock absorber button. And you can select it and you will see that um, in the DIC it'll pop up and it'll show touring and or sport. So if you wanted a sportier mode, you can go to that. Next one is electric power steering. That is just standard. It's electric. It gives us great, um, nice light efforts when you're doing slow maneuvers in parking lots, and yet we tighten it up when we're on the highway. And so that uh, you get the most, best of both worlds there. And then a lot of the stuff that you would never see on things that we've redesigned and tuned with engine mounts, uh, attachments to the frame where we stiffened them up, um, added, even modified the rear suspension to this cross axis ball joint to help the steering so that the rear follows the front even closer. Um, and then another area where your whole life is on four little patches, we've done a lot of, a lot of work on the tires where uh, they're better for fuel economy, better for uh, traction, and better for stopping where we can, this new Escalade stops nine feet shorter than the previous one. So a lot of great improvements that, um, that 
that usually go unnoticed. Safety is a critical piece. Um, again, um, and the industry is moving this way, so not, not much of this is a surprise, and you'll find that uh, the other Cadillacs, if you've been on those um, events, have the same type of content. Our driver awareness package has side blind zone uh, with lane change alert. Lane change alert is kind of a newer one. That feature um, works kind of off of side blind zone, which I'm sure all of you know. Lane change looks back behind you about 230 feet. So in case somebody's coming up behind you much faster than you are, 20, 30 miles an hour faster, it'll let you know to say, hey, stay in your lane for you know, a couple seconds and you get the same icon in the outside rear view mirror will start blinking and lighting up. That's what that feature is. The one I love is the rear cross traffic. These are big vehicles. And so when you're backing up and you're in a line of vehicles, if you cannot see what's coming down the aisle, this feature will let you. It'll buzz the haptic seat, which is our safety, it's the last bullet on here, safety alert seat. It'll pulse your seat to let you know something's coming and it'll show up in the navigation screen It'll show you an arrow and, an, um, and a triangle showing you which direction this other vehicle is coming from. So it's a, it's a nice feature. The driver assist is on the premium package only it's on the right here. That brings in full speed range adaptive cruise control. And with that, you get um, collision, uh, automatic collision preparation. That's the feature where if all of a sudden somebody pulls out in front of you and you're jumping off the brake, trying, or jumping off the accelerator to get to the brake, the system will know if you're trying to do that and it'll get to the brake faster than you can. So it helps lower your speed um, and try to prevent that accident. The feature that I like the best though is the automatic front and rear braking. Okay, so rear park assist, you're in reverse and you're backing up and it beep, 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 lets you know that you're getting close to something. If you're not paying attention to that, you can just hit it anyway, right? This automatic front and rear braking actually will stop you. And I know it works because I, unfortunately put it to the test and it's very abrupt and you know that something happened and it stops you so um, if you're just backing up five eight miles an hour normal that's when it activates if it knows you're trying to get close and close and close then it kind of deactivates so it knows the system's <coughs> smart enough to know um, this one I only want to highlight a couple things um, we've done a lot of work in um, keeping our vehicles from being stolen or broken into. There's a great secondary market out there for Escalade and Escalade parts. And so we've really taken great strides to uh, keep the vehicle together. Um, the highlighted features over here, interior movement sensor, inclination sensor, the um, self-powered horn, and, and the light. Those are the ones we talk about. Those are the ones you'll see in a lot of our literature. People can really grasp those. We've got another dozen, and not even all of them are here that we've gone through um, to prevent the vehicle from being stolen. You won't get this slide. I just wanted to highlight some of the things that we're doing. Thieves are brilliant and they want, they'll want to get into the vehicle. Our goal is to make it take longer and longer before they can get into the vehicle in hopes that they go find something easier to go and steal or break into. Um, yes? That, that high chart. Yes. Can you explain what, this is all the different ways that Escalades in particular are stolen? Or in general, in general, or in general, general. these are uh, different ways that vehicles get stolen. So uh, they get broken into and there's a uh, follow truck that comes and just pushes it around the corner or to a place where they can go and strip it down. Yeah, yeah, you, know, uh, you know all that stuff, you know all the stuff. You know. Yeah, I'm just... <laughs> This is not specific to Escalade. No, this is, this is in just general. General. Yes. Okay. In general. Um, since I did not put the chart together, but we've been using it, I, I'm sure it's it's probably close for us as well. I, I don't think. I, I think it's pretty fair to say that most get stolen the same way. Fraud is just simply you go to a valet and they make a copy of your key or something like that. Um, uh, another drive away. You know, puts a drive away with the key where they're changing parts in the vehicle once they've broken into. So I'll talk about that in more detail if you're interested on the ride. Here's a story that nobody else can tell, and this is an exciting one for us. For the last four years in a row, Escalade has won the JD Power Initial Quality Survey for the last four years in a row. 
If that isn't a great story, here's the better one. It's our dependability. We've won that one for 14 as well. And this one goes back for three years. So if you look at it in the segment, if you really want something that's going to last and has great quality, Escalate stands out. Um, packaging and pricing. Before I go to this slide, and I'll try to be brief, I wanted to talk about uh, this, this got brought up that's last night, so it's the only reason why I thought I would share it with the group. Where are, where are the customers going to come from? Do we want to increase market share from where we are today? Sure we do. How are we going to do that? A couple of basic ways. Um, one of the areas we talk about is the wondering eye. Our segment's unique in the sense, and sorry for those of you who heard this last night, I told you you'd hear this again. Uh, our, this segment's unique in the fact that um, people who are in this segment stay in this segment. They like this segment. And um, they bounce around from vehicle to vehicle, but they want to stay in the segment. The second piece of this puzzle is what we call um, the wandering eye, or the new kid on the block. Every time a new vehicle comes out in the segment, they get shared consistently, four or five percent. And then lastly, um, Escalade, after an eight-year life cycle, we are still number one for second choice. So somebody who bought a GL, second choice, would have been an Escalade. Somebody who was going to buy an Infinity, second choice, Escalade. So the Escalade after a year life cycle is still really relevant and still desired. So when we put all these different pieces together, we, we are feeling pretty good that we will be able to do a decent job um, gaining some volume back. Yes, sir? Speaking of those choices, can you um, elaborate on what you guys consider to be in this segment besides the Infinity and the GL? Um, certainly, those are the two main, those guys, as well as Range Rover, Range Rover and um, to a lesser extent, Navigator. They've, con they've fallen off pace with the rest of the group as far as certainly sales, styling, um, feature content. Um, to a far, far lesser extent than the uh, Q7 is, is sometimes put in the segment. Uh, but clearly the GL and the Q7 are, are, are really mid-size crossover vehicles that are just priced in the luxury full-size segment. So that's why they're sometimes considered there. So GL Infinity, Range Rover, Navigator, <coughs> okay? Um, packaging and pricing, just wanted to touch base. I know this is an eye chart. What I really wanted to just basically uh, tell the story here is Escalade is, is very simple for the dealers to order and very simple for customers to understand online. There's three main packages. I've got a standard, a luxury, and a premium, and they just build on each other. Everything in gold is new content for the Gen 4, this next generation. So a lot of new standard content in here. Um, and when we get to the luxury collection, we bring in a head-up display, 22-inch wheels, sunroof, a lot of things that people always want, and some of the safety. Um, we come in here to the premium collection, we bring in the full speed range, adaptive cruise control, we bring in standard rear seat entertainment and some of the other features that we talked about. Um, and then we add cornering lamps as well as the uh, lift door handles. The part that the dealers really like though are, these are my free flows. It doesn't get much simpler than this in the industry. Um, you, you either get rear wheel drive or four wheel drive, and you either get second row buckets or a bench. Okay, so for my base model, that's it. So it's very simple. So when I get to the luxury, all I add are an up-level 22-inch wheel from the one that comes with it, or I make rear seat entertainment available. And when I get all the way to my premium, the first two are still the same, and I add the same 22-inch wheel, or I add these power assist steps, which a lot of the vehicles have. You'll see those today on the ride. Base price, everybody's always wondering, hey, how much is this thing coming out for? 72,690. Um, and then we just work our way up to there to uh, 81,190. These are short wheelbase prices. The long wheelbase, and I think that's in the information you're getting. Those you can add about 3,000 on each one of these. Does that include destination? Um, yes, mm -hmm. destination. Yep.